Hi everyone, it's me, Brittany. And hey Eric. And you're watching the Smoky Mountain Family. And today we're at... We're at the Arts and Crafts community. We're about to take you guys on this eight mile loop. We believe that out of the millions and millions of visitors that visit this area every year, that the Arts and Crafts community just doesn't get enough attention. There's a lot of hard working, creative individuals that have shops down here. Yeah. So we wanted to show you guys, highlight these spots and hopefully help and bring some value to the shops along this loop. So we're gonna start right here. We're going to end at Santa's Closet. So stay till the end, there's a lot of cool stuff. Let's get it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So as you can see, we are entering from the first arts and crafts road that you get to <clears throat> coming out of Gatlinburg. And the first stop is the Smoky Mountain Arts and Crafts Village. There's 25 shops here. If you see any that you would like us to review, we always ask for permission. We've never been told no. They're actually excited that we want to. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything that you are interested in seeing more in depth, we'll do that. Just request it. Okay. Over to our right. So as soon as you walk in, it's like this big shopping center. We're gonna have what in the future will be JP Smokehouse. They're still doing work on that, it's not open, but there will be a restaurant to stop at, which you need one. But over to the left here, this is called Treasures in Earthen Vessels, handmade stoneware pottery. They're really, really cool. So here's Hills Creek Gallery. So they do photography, jewelry, art class, and then the Rose Peddler as well. This is all in building two. You have Nelson's Farm. They have soaps, lotions, things like that there. Here's a closer look at the Rose Peddler. To your left, you have the Pet Barn. We went in there, they have some really nice treats, a lot of clothes for smaller dogs. It's the Christmas Eve handcrafted gift shop. At least for this section that we're about to go up in, there is a wheelchair ramp here. So there's a ramp so you can put strollers if you have section. walking difficulties. You can also go to the section we were just at through this route as well. This building over here to the left, it's so very cherry. It was just for me to go here. We walked in here. It's amazing. They have all kinds of cherry stuff and I love cherries. So we will be doing a detailed review of that place. JJ Signs and Gifts, we were actually just in this store. They have a lot of unique pieces. There's a lot of glass done really creatively and this is hand painted too. And they're very friendly. So this is the Fleur de Vie. <laughs> you sound like but, Pepe Le Pew. No idea. <laughs> But they it looks like they have a lot Fresh of art pieces. Flower, jewelry, and art. Wildlife prints and photos, vivid landscapes. Looks pretty nice. Good natured gifts. In here it looks like some wood pieces, some paintings, a little bit of everything. And jewelry. Silk paintings as well. Here's the other side is so very cherry. I can't wait to go in there. We've seen some barbecue sauces we want, some heating things that we want, chocolate covered cherries. You'll see that soon. And here's Guyver's Gadgets. There's Mike. And there's... <laughs> They're gonna pick my grandpa's jukebox. Yeah, they are, they are. And then here's Serendipity. You see the Create Your Own signs, and this is where kids can do or whatever art that yeah. is there. This would be really cool for around the holidays. You can see in there there's like holiday pottery, ceramic pieces. I'm pretty sure they mass produce those signs. Like you see those, yeah. the very same sign. Yeah, the create your own. This is one of the coolest things in here, I think. This is Guyver's Gadgets that you just seen. It's actually their workshop where they do the repairs. Really cool stuff. We have the Shikanahe Stone Art and Jewelry. So Shikanahe means blue smoke in the mountains. It's actually a Cherokee word, right? Native American. And then here's a little place to sit. 
We're at the last section. This is the one all the way to the left. So you pull in the main entrance. We're first greeted with a Jan Piesto art, possibly. Original watercolors. Right in front of you, you have Caveman Creations. We talked to the lady in there, and you could bring in a photo, and they could laser it on a piece of wood. Yeah, really cool stuff. You can see some of the work that they do right here in the window. Hand and Heart Creations, they have so many nice pieces. There's color in here that you're not going to see from any artist because he had something with his eye where normal people have three. He had a fourth and cone he had a or fourth something? in both eyes, which makes him see color that no one else, no one else sees. Can see. And you can see that in But it's very evident because even with him having that type of range, the colors that he puts on, on canvas are just crazy. You know which pieces crazy. are immediately. Yeah. Here's the watercolor, and I'm not going to butcher that name again, but. <laughs> You're inviting kids of all ages come in and create a slap bracelet free. Create your own memory. Wow. That's cute. That's cool. So this is into the West mm -hmm. leather. Oh, so the <laughs> leather worker. That's nice. Those nice pillows stuff. Are I believe this may be Raku Art Gallery. But man, they have metal works in there. It's just a lot of very unique pieces. Obviously you won't see anywhere else. Yeah. And that's the 25 shots of this location. We're on to the next one. On to the next one. So here's Laura Lee, I think, it's Candle and Zook's Woodworks. They have a create your own here. Christmas gift ideas times a thousand for the girls. Connected right there is Coffee and Company. You will definitely see us review this in the future. Absolutely. Probably very soon. <laughs> All right, so next up, right next door to Laura Lee's Candles and the woodworking place is Apple Annie's and mm -hmm. Sip and Shop. The Quilters Corner. They have braided rugs, soap, antiques, quilts. You can see over here some of the offerings of the Sip and Shop. Iced teas, fresh sweet lemonade, milkshakes, iced coffee, frappes. And then this cool thing. So we're here at the next stop. There's three shops to the left, the Glade Soda Fountain. And the middle one here is Gary McCoy. He's the real McCoy wearable art. And he's a leather shop. Looks like some woodwork in there too. This ivy on the side of this building is awesome. Yeah. Keegan loves this place. It's the Greenway Trading Company. They have a lot of flowers and plants and they have an official pterodactyl. Official. Another one of the arts and crafts create your own shops mm -hmm. is Sparky's Glass Blowing. I will say we have gained quite a bit of interest in coming here mm -hmm. and doing some create your own with the girls. Really cool looking joint. An important bit of information is that the trolley actually runs all the way through the arts and crafts community. So if you're staying downtown, don't feel like getting in the car, hop on the trolley and come out here. But look at the crowds down here today. It's always like this. So we're going into the Morning Mist Village. It says 25 arts and craft shops. 25 is a popular number of craft stores to have in one place, apparently. So if you've watched the channel, more than this video anyway, you're probably going to recognize this place. We did a video here on the Glade Soda Fountain. Delicious stuff. There is a ramp here as well to bring you to all the shops. And pretty much everywhere we've been, besides a little bit at those first 25 shops, it seems like it has had ADA accessibility. So this first one here, they have all kinds of Halloween and Christmas seasonal ceramics. There's a Frankenstein here that I have to have, and it's the cutest. I love retro Christmas, but I love even more retro Halloween. You can see here it says coming soon, Black Bear Crafts. Handcrafted candles by Dick and Marie. Hand tuned wind chimes. And here's a little quilting shop as well. Here's the name of the, sh the quilting shop, Mountain Stitches by Susan. And then actually I think we've received a, a lot of people saying they know about Misty Mountain. Yeah, and maybe a suggestion to come and give this place a closer look. Soaps and skincare. 
Looking at soaps, lotions, bath bombs, oh, salt and that. sugar scrubs, men's products, doggy shampoo, <gasps> lip balms, lotion bars. Made right here in Gatlinburg. It's a different kind of place. Tahiti beads. It looks really unique. It's really different in there. There's a monkey. <laughs> they have custom jewelry beading supplies and design your own beading classes. That's here is sign. Joe Compton Woodworking. If you have a sign like that out in front of your store, I'm interested to see what's inside <laughs> for certain. Oh, they see they went across the street. This is Shop Africa, and we are definitely going in this store. Look at these. I could see these being good, like blanket holders for like the living room. Oh, yeah. That's what we're going to go and check. Have to like a place named this, right? Rustic Redneck Woodcrafts. It's a tongue twister. Say it. Rustic Redneck Woodcrafts. You, no, say it fast. Rustic Redneck Woodcrafts. <laughs> say it three times. Nope, I'm done. <laughs> Actually, I think the name of this is Smoky Mountain Rose Lady. Nevertheless, beautiful stuff in the shop. And this place is called the Wood Cottage. I see a lot of signs and decorations you would see in cabins, but the sun catchers are amazing. Look at that bear sun catcher. My grandma would really like the butterfly one too. So here's the William Britton Gallery. Looks like a lot of nice paintings. So continuing on, we're at Wire Wonders. Cute jewelry. Ooh, the rocks. I love those. Then to the left here is the Morning Mist Cafe. Looks like they have lots of good things. You stop in and get your bite to eat. There's plenty of room to sit right next to it. Here's a scan of their menu. Rounding out our tour here at the Morning Mist is the White Buffalo, Native American Gifts. And then directly to its right is a fudge shop. So the following shops are gonna be at the Glades Arts and Craft Center, directly across from the Morning Mist Village. Impressions Pottery, that's all the way on your left there. Right in the center is Elk River Crafts, Gifts, and Rustic Decor. This one that's, is for sale if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, it is for sale. This building right here actually has an apartment or some living space up top and then room for three shops. It looks like currently inhabiting the three shops is Amish Products, Tennessee Homemade Products, and Farmhouse Primitive Decor. And then look at those boards right there. That is old school Gatlinburg. I think that's Dolly Park. And continuing to walk upwards is the artsy olive. So it's olive and vinegar tasting. I can't wait. Hmm. I love me some olives. You love olive oil. Well, yeah, we cook in olive oil, but I don't know that I would like to just drink like a it. Vinaigrette. Well, the next stop here is Perfect Essentials. So it looks like they have a lot of unicorn arts and mm -hmm. crafts like and such. The new age abstract like paint pour stuff looking. There's a shot in there. Then the next spot is called Love Life, Live Life. Always artful, handcrafted, fused glass jewelry. Pretty cool spot. So the corner of this building is Tim Weberding's Woodworking. We have a lot of different types of pieces even within the woodworking community. Look at those. And then I think you really want to know how creative Tim is. You check out this bear ball. All right, so then you round the corner here, you have Country Antics Primitives. So it looks like they have a lot of honey jam, butter, this kind of stuff, and other crafts. And they also feature Pappy's White Lightning. So Novus Candela, <laughs> Bath and Crafts. More restrooms. And more restrooms. Then you have at the very end here, you have Timber's Log Cabin Restaurant. Like most places, they're having to limit their hours currently, Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m but it looks like a really interesting place. Yeah. And it looks like they got some coffee. And I think for most people, Eloan is kind of the central spot here in the arts and crafts community, at least maybe the most recognizable. Beautiful setting, beautiful location. appropriately named Cliff Dwellers Gallery it sits right here nestled along the mountain. They have several things from prints to clothing to woodworks to glassworks. Pottery. It's a lot of pottery. A cat. <laughs> they have a cat that just kind of chills in there. Another spot that's drawn our interest has been this Red Oak Bistro sitting up here on the hill. Definitely thought about going and giving this place a try. And then if you've been coming to this area for any length of time you probably recognize Jim Gray. 
So this is the gallery. Him, he's got family members Look paintings in here, and friends. Yeah. Definitely be taking a closer look at this place. So next up is a sugar shack. We've got a lot of candy options That's here. Coming soon, sugar shack candy store, hot cocoa bomb. Hot cocoa bomb. And then here's the Smith Scrimshaw knives and silver silver smithing. Silver smithing. Three times. Try to get a glimpse in there. Then again, if you're familiar with the channel, you've also seen Gatlinburg Grown. The Happy Pinecone Cafe and Gift Shop. I want to eat here just for the name. So this is behind everything that we just showed you We took our coffee here. down here. Yeah, Definitely. during the Gatlinburg Grind, yep. So I don't see a name on this, Isaac but... Isaac Trotter Photography. Oh, Isaac Trotter Photography. And it looks like they put together some really, really Which nice photos. Ones? Are you going to look at that? Thank you. Wedding. Then here's another craft shop named Fox Creek. They have baskets and some of the other kind of stuff that you typically see in this area, but with, obviously with their own spin on it. Like then if you go here from the Happy Pine Cone and just keep following back, you'll come to some steps and there's a little shop up here called Little Bit of Gatlinburg. All right, so we needed to stop and kind of talk a little bit about a little bit of Gatlinburg and the experience that we had there, so. So the story as a kid, barely remember it. I was probably five or under. And we went to this house, and it wasn't here, and I can't remember where it was, but there was an artist there. My grandpa was going to go buy some paintings. We went to the door. No one was there, me and my grandma and my uncle and grandpa. And there's a note on the door that if you go there and she's not there, just go to this little red ribbon that she's painting and just yell for Iva. And this is Iva. I was in his shop, and I was like, these look familiar. Like, this style looks familiar. And then I was like, who is this? So this yeah. is where you can find those pieces. This is the power of a place like this. Like my grandpa's passed away and he was like a dad to me. And I have this story and like being able to find these pieces because artist work lives on. I've has passed away since and now I have this again. So. And this is something that you've talked about for years, you know, this memory and it's really cool to experience this today, so. Next. That's it. <laughs> Back down here, right on Glades Road, you have concrete statuary designs. We actually do have a video on this lost in the archives right now that we might be bringing back, being that we're talking a lot about the arts and crafts community. Next up is Ombi's Handmade Woodcrafts. So this is a rather large shop. Ombi's a very popular name. I think probably one of the first families that settled here, or maybe at least one of the more prominent ones. And unlike downtown Gatlinburg, there is no shortage of public restrooms here in the arts and crafts community. So here is Doug Ben's Fine Art Gallery. It looks like they have more paintings and things like that. It might be worth a second look from us. Here's the Twisted Vine. It looks like more paintings and crafts with their own unique spin. Now, this is a little different than the basically the entirety of the arts and crafts community. This is back here where Split Rail Eats is, but upon driving up this direction, we see little shops down towards the end. You see we a lot of signs for shops. Signs there, like but... a non denominational church sign. Um, and then here's flowers, petals. But and, you can see. And the signs are themed just like the rest of uh -huh. the, uh, the Arts and Crafts community, but I mean, these are apartments. Yeah. And then the only like resemblance of down in this the shopping section. area is right over here, which is actually, if you look on back in there, you can see split rail down way back in there. But then I mean, there's one that says more than a candle and stuff like that. It's still just none of them look open. It just looks like I people think what live they were here. going for was like, you know, how you walk downtown and like downtown, small town America, and you'll see like the shops down there and then apartments on top. Like, it looks like that may have been the thought here, but I just don't think it, it works. And there's the White Oak Flats covered bridge there. Here is the Firefly Glass Studio. It's also one of the you create. So it has intrigued us. Shops. Yeah. So this is another place, kind of just like Sparky's. Yeah, you follow these signs. They're really good about this. If you see anything advertised in the arts and crafts community and there's a sign, they have them all See, here's the second the sign, kind of lets you know. Hey, you don't ever here. have to worry if you're going the right spot because they sign you to death, <laughs> which is yeah, good. Good, good thing. Because I would be like, oh my gosh, I went too far at this There's point. another one. That's oh, here it cute. is. Look There's at the, the all the signs girl. over there. That's adorable. The create your own banner. And here's the front of this spot. Really cool. Really cool. So 
So this next spot is Gatlinburg Ceramics. This is another place that upon driving by Never seen it open. day after day, we haven't really seen this place open. I hope it does open though, because they have the cutest tea party sets. Yeah, absolutely. So it says here since 1973. And then similar to this place, as far as us not really seeing it open, Potter in the Park there. And here is their building right next door to Gatlinburg Ceramics. So the next little stop here is the Paul Murray Gallery. And this place is straight out of a storybook. Kate's Cove. Oh yeah. Straight out Kate's Cove. Like, this is just a beautiful setting. Actually, it looks like they're doing some sort of renovations on this place. We've stopped by a couple times. Close. Haven't been open, uh, but man, just uh, And Paul Murray is popular. They used to be on the, um, right before you get to Gatlinburg, that antique for the big chicken. Yeah. They featured some of his pieces there. And here's the Fox and Parrot Tavern. This is an authentic English pub. They tout themselves as the only authentic English pub in town. So here's a shot of the Fox and Parrot. Also note that there is an urchin carrier down here. So make it magic, really cool spot. Both owners, Twinkles and Rick Starkey, are both magicians and both do really cool things. And they have a craft shop, they do woodworking, all sorts of things. Class, and they said they added the art stuff as an afterthought and it is some good art to be an afterthought, hey, that's for sure. We will, this is one of the cutest setups. Yeah, absolutely. And we will be back here yeah. very, very soon. This is where so right is. after you pass Magic, the magic shop, we will come to this stop sign here. And you take a left, it takes you up towards Pigeon Forge, but you take a right and it continues on to the Arts and Crafts Loop. We stop. And also takes you to the next stop, which is G Webb Gallery. As you may have noticed, G Webb's artwork is featured in our giveaway. So a big thanks to G Webb and staff here at the gallery. G-Web also has other artists featured here, including, I believe he, they said his daughter, also has some uh, work here in the studio as well. So the Hemlock Village, neat little spot up here. We have the Highland Craft Gallery. So another unique little shop. And I think this whole section, it looks like, is this gallery. So yeah, rather large spot. Everything you're going to see in this area is the mountain arts, artisans that work, eight unique shops. So this is the area that we're in. Just a little past the Hemlock Village place is the Auto Press Artist in Wood. So it looks like some wood carving. Yeah, I mean this is exactly, if you close your eyes and envision a wood carving place, this is it. Oh yeah, so you've seen a little girl over here carving yeah, on the way back there? Before, she got to hit it. That's awesome. So we found this very interesting, the Wild Plum Tea Room, established in 1984. So at this point, I'm not sure what exactly it is, but one thing I am for certain of is it looks really, really cool. So it's like a restaurant, like tea type place, I think. Lobster Wild pie, Plum Salmon Tea. Burger, Impossible Burger. Looks like a lot of vegetarian options open thursday through saturday 11 to 30. cute so out of all the interesting things we've seen today this is probably the coolest the viking blade supply actually makes forging and knife making classes that's why offer. i seen the girl <laughs> yeah yeah that's cute awesome hopefully i don't butcher this but it's warnikov fine arts gallery i hope and i can definitely pronounce this one oh, this judy jones pottery so there's a sign out here that says the Mountain Arts Complex, which I'm guessing is this building. But I don't really see a whole lot going on there. But I will draw your attention to up on the hill. That is Buckhorn Bear Lodge, apparently. We're pulling away from there. We're almost at the end of at least the side road part of the loop. Here you have Vern Heppensteel paints the Smokies. And now just a closer look at that. They have a lot of paintings and prints in here from Vern and different artists. They also have a little dog that greets you as well. 
from inside that door. Here's our next stop. So occupying this building is Brandywine Pottery and Woodlands Tiles. So here we're at Terry Waters Gallery. They give you good signage here. Yeah, so this sits back off the glades a little bit or off the loop. They have But all you can see one, two. Gallery. Like you will not miss this place. Gallery. Well, if they didn't have it, you would. Yeah, you would. Gallery entrance and parking. So you go all the way up here, and here is where the gallery. Another, I mean, every one of these places has its own, like, It's cute. It's beauty. tucked away. It's unique. Yeah, it's unique. A lot of stained glass in here. Absolutely. So, Terry Waters. And that takes us to the bottom of the road here, back out at 321. So now, we're, this is East Parkway. So this is the second entrance to the Austin Crafts community, and it will be signified by this sign here and the Pittman Center Town Limit sign. So if you're doing the loop the way that we did it in the order you did it, when you come back down 321, you're gonna pass this gas station, the Sitco gas station. You're gonna come up on, right up here, a bunch of woodworking spots. And these are really nice. I like the one in Wears Valley as well, but this one has some Christmas bears that are just exceptional. Also, as you drive down this road, like 100 yards 150 200 yards off to the left from the way we're driving right now is the national park we are literally driving along the national park right now so this wood crafting shop i'm not for certain the name of it but you do see the member of the arts and crafts community sign there check out this bear and as you walk up here you can smell the the stain and the, the, the lumber that they use on uh these products Really cool, like tiki guys here. And then some of our favorites are the bears dressed up as Santa. And now we're back where we began. There's so another woodworking to a, your yeah, right. Yeah, woodworking to the right there. You, you see this. the arts and crafts sign again that we started at there on the right. And what we're gonna be focusing on are the shops to the left here at this light. There's another trolley stop, tailored for the arts and crafts community. This starts with SML Woodcrafters. It has cedar chests that are sold. It smells so good. There's quilts as well. A sign for the garden. Keep those quilts in that cedar chest. There's a sleepy little bear. Oh my God, look at that crayon holder. Or a pencil holder. That That's is so cool. cool. They've got a lot of cute wooden toys. More bathrooms. Come to the Wood Whittlers here. So their shop. Nice. And Grandpa, Grandma lies over here. I want to try ice cream from here. Then we got Glades Homemade Candy. This is certainly on the list to make a stop at. It says homemade ice cream too. I want to see where this stacks up along the other ones. So like here's Fowler's Clay Work. It says they have pottery classes. But you can see there's been pottery. Yeah, we want to get, yeah. I'm trying to get the girls in up here. Yeah. That'd be cool. Upon further investigation, we found that Fowler's is back here as well. These are behind those initial buildings right on the uh, highway, and they are open. So next we have the Leather Works. It's another leather shop there. Yeah, a lot of belts in there. Yeah, a lot of belts, leather goods. Interested to learn what Perilio's Styling Studio is about. And then you have Village Candles. In walking distance, you have, I think it's the Artist Abuse Landing, maybe? Abuse? Several shops over here we're about to show you. So I saw Abuse Landing, they have corn growing. It's like cherry tomatoes. Not for sure what some of this is. Peppers. Has anybody it's grown a pepper big plant? Big tomatoes. A million peppers a day. <laughs> oh yeah, and then here's some peppers. So rounding out the shops in the Arch Grass community, you have this last section here, Organic Fusion, which is a hair and nail salon. Then Rocky Flats, Pottery and Soap. J.M. Stewart Gallery. The Art of the Hopi. Looks like a Native American themed craft store. Midnight Lighted Wood. They have some cool pillows in there too, it looks like. They're open later. Yeah. Don't see many of these doors open this at this time of day. Lick Log. Lick Log Hollow Baskets. 
that stops there. Okay. And, and here's the view pottery. pottery, I think it is. Yep. Yeah. Last but not least, Santa's closet. We're going to be doing this on Suggestions Week. Yeah. In November, December. Yeah, getting close to the holidays, and I'm so excited. Oh my God, and as we said, the man himself is right here. Hello, Santa. What are you doing out? It's hot, man. I know, right? I know. Here's a shot in front. And man, I'm so excited. We're pretty big Christmas fans and Halloween fans. We normally start Halloween right around September the 1st and Christmas around November 1st. So be counting on us being the early guys when it comes to holiday footage. All right, so that was the arts and crafts community loop. I mean, you of course rate this a 10, it goes without saying. I would suggest to take a day and just enjoy it. Build memories. We just restored a childhood memory of mine with my grandpa with a painting that I remember from when I was like five or less, you know? This is just really cool. It has a lot of different things. There's paintings, there's pottery, there's jewelry, there's clothes. I mean, it's everything, 10. The shops here at the Arts and Crafts community, it literally is the backbone of Gatlinburg, this area. It's the local artisans that, that, are, that are kind of the, the, the meat and potatoes of everything else that's going on here. But it wasn't until we took kind of like this deep dive into the area that we realized, man, there are so, I mean, you know, there wasn't a place that I walked into that didn't have something that I would take out of there. And, and everyone's nice. Yeah, and that's another thing too. It's like these these folks are happy to see you. They're happy you're here. They're they're happy to tell you about the work that they've done and uh, the inspiration for the work that they've done and why it is that they have a shop here. It's just a great experience, and it's definitely worth. I mean, we spent the day. We didn't even go into everything. You could spend an entire. We spent an entire day doing this. You could definitely, without a doubt, spend an entire day uh, exploring the arts and crafts community. So it's a ten. The experience is a ten. Thank you guys for watching. Just make sure come out here next time you're in next time you're in the area. Come out here and give these shops a visit and support these local artisans. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.